Alright, hello everybody. Welcome to the best damn podcast there ever was, episode 3 for Payback 2015 and the following Raw. Um, I'm your host, Cody, along with my uh, good friend and co-host, Bryce. What up, peeps? And uh, as advertised on YouTube, before we get into the actual review here, I do have a special announcement regarding the uh, podcast and my YouTube channel. Um, the podcast will be expanding. <laughs> Bryce is looking at me like, what, right now? Because I haven't talked to him about this. But it is expanding, and most of the episodes of the podcast will not feature Bryce from now on. And don't worry, he's not getting future endeavored from the podcast. Um, it's just, it would make it kind of hard for us to get together for every single episode of the podcast, because... I'm planning on expanding it to most of the WWE events, including Raw and SmackDown. Um, but he still will be here after every pay-per-view and every NXT special as it is now. And those will be our big podcasts. Um, the Raw and the Raw podcast that I do by myself every week, um, when we don't cover one after a pay-per-view, uh, will be probably about an hour, maybe a little less. The SmackDown podcast will be between a half hour and 45 minutes. And we w- I will also be doing, this won't be part of the actual podcast. This will, These will be like mini-sodes. I'm going to be doing like 5-10 minute reviews of Superstars and Main Event every week. And I will also be doing short videos on my YouTube channel, like WWE News and stuff because I'll be spending a lot more time on the dirt sheets. Um, For those of you wondering where the gaming content on my channel will be going, uh, that won't be going away. Um, It will be coming back, but it will stay off my channel for a while while I get this going with the the wrestling stuff. But it will return. Give me a month or two, and it will return, uh, like I said. So into the review. Um, The first match of Payback started off... uh, on the pre-show between R-Truth and Stardust, which was a match that wasn't advertised. Um, R-Truth ended up winning this match. I don't remember much of this match. It was kind of a throwaway match just to give Truth a match and kind of build him up before Elimination Chamber, I think. What did you think of the match, Bryce? Um, I think it was just, you know, two guys thrown together last second just to give two guys a spot on the show. Other than that, it wasn't really much for me. Like, it was... Not too long, plus it was was one of two matches on the pre-show, so I knew it wasn't going to hog too much time. But, you know, like, I personally like Stardust when he's not Stardust. I like Cody Rhodes. I think he should go back to that. But since Vince McMahon gets off on embarrassing the Rhodes family, you know, so be it. You know, and I don't know. I've kind of given up hope on both the guys. You know, that you can feature them in King of the Ring or in Elimination Chamber all you want, but still, I'm not going to buy into them. Yeah, same here. Um, And then a second match on the pre-show. Usually we don't get two pre-show matches, but this one was even shorter than the not-advertised match. Um, It was the Ascension versus the Mega Powers, which is Curtis Axel and uh, Macho Mandau. Uh, I don't like what they're doing with uh, Damian Sandow. I think they should just let him do his own thing. But instead they stick him into a tag team with Curtis Axel, who ruined Ryback's career. (laughs) So... um, I don't know, not much to say about this match. It, I, th- I thought the Mega Powers were going to win this match and the Ascension was going to keep jobbing, but the Ascension ended up winning it, and it looks like they're starting to build the Ascension up, which I like. Yeah, I like that too. I could possibly see um, the Ascension kind of feuding with one of the top couple teams, like maybe the Lucha Dragons or whatever, maybe even the New Day for the titles. You know, give the New Day a good lengthy run because um, right now, like, it's it's the New Day, it's Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, it's the Lucha Dragons. You know, the tag team division is not as limited, but there's not a lot of heel teams, you know. There's not a lot of face teams to go with the heel teams. So, you know, just build them up and keep going, and maybe they'll regain the popularity they had in NXT. I think this match was to kind of showcase their dominance because it was pretty fast, and... um. I am kind of displeased with what they're doing with Damian Sandow because here he was doing the same thing. He was just mimicking other superstars like for months prior to him becoming Damian Mizdow, and now he's back to doing this. And I thought after 
WrestleMania, he would have been doing something a little bit different, but apparently not. Yeah, um, Joey, I know that's you in the chat. Did the bot do something to you? Uh, I, I only pulled the chat up like a minute ago, so I don't see anything that happened before that. I hope it didn't do anything. I, I just have that there so I don't I so I don't have to pull up the chat on my computer and moderate it myself. So, um, but moving on, the first match of the night was Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler. This was an. I, I just looked at the the screen of what was happening in the Divas match we got going right now. Um, this was an okay match. I mean, there wasn't much leading up to this that made me care too much. They tried to build it up, but I, it didn't invest me that much. What'd you think? Well, you know, I like Dolph Ziggler. I like Sheamus. Um, Same here. No matter what, like, I'm going to enjoy the physicality between these two because Sheamus is a hard hitter. Dolph sells like, you know, like a god. Um, he he can sell that bro kick like no other. Yeah. Like, he just he kicks it, and then he just goes dead. It's so cool to see. Um, there's not, like, a lot of buildup, I guess, to their whole feud. Um at least Dolph got his revenge. But I've, like I don't understand why. Like whoever wins, the opposite guy kisses the ass or like whatever. But you know whatever. Like they're they're both going to the elimination chamber, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I call the I call the final two being those two. So. Yeah. Uh, Joey, it's not supposed to ban you for saying K. I don't know. I'll. I'll I'll look through my bot settings after this episode of the podcast and see if there's anything wrong, because there probably is if it actually did. New I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, that's actually the next match. Uh, the New Day um, beat uh, Kid and Cesaro. I was surprised with this match. Uh, I I had forgot it was two out of three falls, but in my opinion, it was the it was the um, third best match of the night. Um, I was it was a lot better than I expected. It was a really really good match, and I guess you can kind of expect that with Kid and Cesaro. But I I the thing that took away from it for me is I didn't like the ending of it. Um, I mean, I guess it kind of made sense, but that's just playing the black card in my opinion, not all to be people, racist. All black people look alike. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, that's what what can you expect? Vince McMahon slaps a stereotypical gimmick on three black dudes where they're all preaching and, you know, clap happy and whatever. Um, you know, what can you expect? Like, they're, they're already, like, emphasizing a huge stereotype. It's better just to add more fuel to the fire, you know. It, they're definitely improving. Like, they're better off as heels because Bo Dallas is kind of similar. He's, like, that positive heel type. But um, I knew they weren't going to lose the titles. Because the Extreme Rules was only three weeks ago. Yeah. Unless you're like Edge or um, The Miz even, your title reign is going to last longer than a month, you know. Because if you think about it, all of Edge's world title reigns were like less than a month, you know. And Miz has had two IC title reigns that lasted one day. Because my man Ziggler ruined one of them. Um, but, you know... It was cool to see these guys like stretch like two out of three falls out. Um, more like greatest gimmick in the last decade is what this guy says. Wow, that's the stupidest gimmick. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty stupid too. <laughs> but the thing is, like the three guys involved in it are like overdoing it, which makes it good, you know? Yeah. They, I, I've started to like them a little bit more now that they're doing more heel type things. I. I feel like they could be better utilized than they were at the end of that match, though. <sighs> Nothing would have made me happier to see Tyson Kidd and Cesaro go over in this match. So, other than that, it didn't really do anything for me. It was a good match. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And, but, no, just didn't really matter. All right. Um, hopefully, I I think they're gonna end up dropping the titles at Elimination hopefully. Chamber, and we'll get we'll get into why once we get to the raw part of the review. Second greatest gimmick, obviously, Miz down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would ag I would agree with that. Um, moving on, we had Bray Wyatt versus Ryback. Um, this was a match that I didn't really care about too much going in. I mean, I I didn't like that it was Bray Wyatt versus Ryback. 
And to me, Bray Wyatt had kind of fallen off in the last month since Mania. Um, because he hasn't been really been on Raw much even. No. He's just been doing those backstage gimmicks and then he attacked the Ryback once. But it was an okay match and it was what it needed to be. Uh, that one senton that uh, Bray Wyatt did off the rope that landed on Ryback, that was freaking wicked. Yeah. And uh, apparently Ryback actually did get hurt from that. That's why his ribs were taped up yeah. on Raw. That wasn't just played up. He actually did get hurt from that. And I thought he might have when it actually happened because he landed full weight on his body. He didn't land partially on the on the floor. He landed full weight on Ryback. Um, yeah. So, it, your opinion on the match? Well, um, for me, I love Bray Wyatt. I'm just a hardcore fan. Like, there's a big bunch of guys who they could do whatever they want to do, and I'll be a fan of it. Mm -hmm. You know, within reason. I love as, Bray Wyatt. as long as it's not completely stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, if you make Bray Wyatt shave his beard and call him Husky Harris again, I'm going to hate him. Obviously, but I'm probably gonna give up on wrestling. Actually, um, this match really cool, really physical, you know. And it's the like Bray Wyatt's kind of like a brawler. He's not like a technical superstar like Daniel Bryan or whatever. Um, Ryback is obviously not, you know, a, luchad a luchador or whatever. He uh, it it was a hard hitting match, and I, I liked it. It was a favorite of mine. Um, the thing about Bray Wyatt, he has, like, no direction. He's just treading the water, it seems yeah, like. That's... He needs to, like, regain his mystique, you know, and start recruiting more members into the Wyatt family, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, like, he can set up his new recruits against Harper and Rowan, you know. What I, what I think would be cool, like, Harper and Rowan have gone and done their own thing now. And, and yes, uh, Joey, they, they did drop the Elimination Chamber. They did it because the arena that they had it originally scheduled it for that Fastlane ended up being in uh, they couldn't hang the chamber because of a big scoreboard and that's how most of the arenas are these days but they brought they brought it back now because they found an arena that they, that they can do it in um in Corpus Christi but um what, what was I saying I forget um I don't even know yeah I I forget Oh, yeah, uh, Harper and Rowan have gone and done their own thing now. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if Bray Wyatt recruited some more guys for the Wyatt family and then let them do their own thing yeah. and then kind of just kept it going as a cycle. And then, like, two, three years from now, everyone that was in the Wyatt family comes together as a huge stable, and then you're like, oh, wait, these were all the guys that were in the Wyatt family with Bray Wyatt. That'd be freaking cool. Yeah. I think something Bray Wyatt needs to do, I saw this, actually. It was really interesting seeing this. Um... Bray Wyatt shouldn't have, shouldn't have come back after WrestleMania. He should have, like, disappeared, and then Harper and Rowan reunite sometime, you know, like around now, maybe, and they look for their old leader. And then they wreak havoc all over the WWE, then Triple H has had enough of it and says, you need to stop this, otherwise, you know, you're going to pay the consequences. And he sends Big Show and Kane, who have, you know, who are presumably still around at that point, um, to stop them, and at SummerSlam they have a big match. Bray Wyatt still doesn't show up, by the way. Um, and like Harper and Rowan win, and then then you like you hear the squeaking chair of Bray Wyatt, and um, it comes down to like one night on Raw or SmackDown, and. Uh, Bray Wyatt comes in and lays out Triple H and is like the new face of fear is back and he's come for the crown meaning the king of kings you know it, like, I thought that would be a pretty cool storyline because I think if you can take you know Triple H to his limit that means you're going to be a big star because if you think about it John Cena when he became WWE champion he did you know, very little. He wasn't. He wasn't with that star maker. Yeah. You know, he was with Kurt Angle, JBL, Edge. None of those guys really had the um, the superstar level. As talented as all three of them are, sure, they never had that superstar level. Triple H did. You know, because he has that connection. He's worked with Austin, The Rock, Mick Foley, The Undertaker, HBK. Once, once, uh, John Cena went to. WrestleMania with Triple H, he was a star. You knew it then. And look where he is now. Like, I feel like if Bray Wyatt fought Triple H and won, 
he would definitely be a big star for years to come. Because mm-hmm. he's still fresh into his career, too. Like, yeah. You know, so, I don't know. It Every time you see a good idea on Bleacher Report, because that's where I go all the time, um, every time you see a good idea, you hear all the people say, that seems very, very good, which automatically disqualifi- disqualifies it because creative can't do anything good nowadays. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, it looks like the titles are changing hands. I don't think this was for the title. Uh, I'll I'll switch the titles around. It was supposed to be for the title. We just forgot to make it for the title. Um, and yes, I know WWE doesn't think that far ahead. That's what I'm just. That's why I said it would be cool, but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, that's why CM Punk. Uh huh. Um, next match: Cena versus Rusev. I thought this was a really good match, uh, but it, it, it the end was kind of predictable in my opinion. Yeah, because John Cena never quits. Yeah, I I had a, an awesome idea for this match to have Rusev win. I don't know if I ever told you that my idea. I don't know if I mentioned it on the was last podcast. He, was it where he uses Lana to force John Cena to quit? Yeah, he puts Lana yeah, in the accolade. Every, that was everybody's idea. You do not know how many times I saw that online. John or uh, John Cena is going to be winning the match, and then Rusev just grabs a hold of Lana or and threatens to like hurt her or break her neck or whatever if John does not say I quit. You know, it goes back to when China turned on Triple H. You know, when um, Triple H and The Rock had an I Quit match. You know, Kane was gonna like choke slam her or whatever. If Triple H didn't say I quit, Triple H said I quit, and China turned on him. You know, that that would have been the best thing for WWE to do, though, because it would have kept Cena relevant. R- Rusev would have gotten so much heat from that, and then Lana gets to go away and film her movie that she needs to go film with Edge. She's filming a movie with Edge. Yep. Oh my God, what's with him and blondes, man? Seriously. I don't know. He got a daughter with Beth Phoenix. The man is gone, or whatever. You know, going back to what, like, Lay Cool said about her. Um, LOL, Cena wins, yeah. (laughs) Um, This match, I don't know. I'm really getting sick and tired of John Cena. I feel like... He's always good night quit matches. He is... Even though you know he's going to win, he puts on awesome night quit matches. Yeah. In those kind of... There was one big botch in this match, though, that I saw, and it wasn't either of the superstars. It was Lana? No. It was the cameraman. <laughs> uh, was it when he's like focusing on John or whatever, or like? Cause I, I don't know. Whatever. The in case you uh, you missed it uh, in the chat, um, the cameraman had the biggest botch of this whole match. When Cena goes to do the AA onto all the pyro, the cameraman gives it away that there's a freaking mattress there. Oh yeah. That it's a big the biggest botch I've ever seen by a cameraman. I think. Um, and then, and then on Raw, I mean, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but on Raw, they they show a screenshot from the match, and it's the screenshot where you can see the mattress. Yeah, <laughs> like, how stupid can you be? I don't know, that, that kind of was up there when Sin Cara made his debut, and you could see the trampoline jumps, you know? Everybody thought, everybody missed it, apparently, except for me, and I saw, and everyone was so mesmerized, oh my god, he just jumped so high, how did he do that? There's a trampoline right there, you know. So, yeah, the cameramen aren't really, like, thinking so much when it comes to capturing all, like, these angles or whatever, you know. But, whatever. But, yeah, good match. End was kind of predictable. Uh, I don't think anyone's actually translated what Rusev was saying. I I haven't seen it online. People are thinking far too much about that. Who cares what he said, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't, I, eh, yeah, No matter what he said, it doesn't change the story. Much. No. Because Lana still quit for him, so yeah. whatever. Um, next match, worst match of the night in my opinion. I mean, the match was okay, but I had no reason to care for it. It's not for a title or anything. Uh, the, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Naomi versus Tamina versus, uh, no, Naomi and Tamina versus the Bella Twins. I had no investment in this match. I had I did not care whatsoever. Is it because they're divas, you sexist prick? No, if it was for the title, I would have cared. Is it because Paige I, wasn't in it? Is it because no. Paige wasn't in it? The, the, I don't understand why they couldn't have done this tag match on Raw and then done the um more divas, the title match on the, the more, payback. The more divas utilized, the less bitching Twitter happened, you know, gives. Because, like, there's always that hashtag, 
give the divas a chance. You know, who gives a shit? Yes, it was a piss break. Who gives a shit about, you know, um, yeah, the divas match was a piss break. Not, no offense to the fact that it was women, just the fact that it was a shitty ass match. Mm -hmm. Like, Tamina is a walking botch fest, too. Yeah. She, that's a snooker, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. she does her father a lot of shame. Like, damn. Uh, I don't know. I, I could not really tolerate the Bellas. Like, Naomi is barely tolerable. I don't know. That, that booty thing, whatever she does, like, re rear, rear view. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Like, I could watch that all day. I, I'd like to be the victim to that, but you know. <laughs> I want I want Kelly Kelly's stink face. No. Eh, maybe. Like. But uh, this match, it was no. It was nothing for me. Like why why would you use four divas nobody either doesn't care about or cares about very little when you could use four others like who, of people who you know enjoy, like. If AJ was still around, you know, use AJ against somebody, or, you know, use Paige. Wh where was she, by the way? Was she? Uh, I I don't know. She was she was supposed to. I I heard that she was supposed to uh, come back during this match, but they said it doesn't make sense for her to come here, so they pushed it back to Raw and had her come back in a place where it also didn't make sense. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll get to that. Um, anything else you want to say about this match? Ew. Yeah, same here. Um, and then we get Neville and King Barrett. I was excited for this match because I I, I love Neville. I always love his matches. Uh, I thought it would be earlier in the card. I didn't think it was going to be the second last match. But um, I was extremely disappointed by this match. It was an okay match. And then they they en they just ended the way they did. In, in a stupid count out victory. Which was kind of eh. Your, your thoughts on the match? I just feel like their their matches together are just so meaningless. They met at Extreme Rules. They met in the finals of King of the Ring. Now they met again. You know, they meet in every tag match, it seems, because that's what they do. What's the point of watching these two? Yeah, they're entertaining. I like Bad News Barrett. I like the whole, I'm afraid I got some... Well, he doesn't even do that anymore. Um, I love Neville. The Red Arrow makes me, you know, pop every time. But... There's really no meaning to this little feud that they got going for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, add something to it. Yeah. Like, I don't know, Neville's British. Say a, an American can't be king. You know? Or, no, wait, Barrett's British, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. This, it was, a, it was an okay match at best, but, yeah, other than that, it wasn't much. Yeah, and I, I agree, Joy, more page the better. She's my favorite diva of all time. Bryce doesn't agree with me, but... Because Sable is where it's at. No, no, just no. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. No, the best Eve of all time was Trish Stratus or Lita. Yeah. Lita it's it's close, but Lita Paige is my favorite. A, Lita can do a moonsault, you know. Yeah. Like, damn. And then we have the main event of the evening, the fatal four-way between Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Randy Orton. And I gotta say... This was my favorite match of the whole night. Even though you you, you knew who was going to win pretty much, it was my favorite match of the uh, the entire night. Just it, not only was the match good, there were multiple good spots in this match that made it even better. The Shield power bomb was the the best of all. Shield it, reunion. They're never going to reunite the Shield, yeah. by the way. But well, I mean, unless in like in like a few years when Seth Rollins is in front of the Authority or something, but it's not coming anytime soon. Well, yeah, because. I don't know, the fact that they're kind of using them to align, like, even for just one little move, like, they're aligning with each other, I don't know, it, it's too much, because you're just reminding people, like, oh yeah, these guys used to be in the shield, now, they're not three guys, like, you know, who are on their own, like, this isn't, um, Wrestlemania, like, 2000, like, none of those guys, except The Rock and Mick Foley, they were, none of them were in a tag team together. Roman and Dean Ambrose should be a tag team. I said that too. Yeah, yeah. they should. They should have kept I the said shield that as soon going. As they broke it up. Yeah. Roman and Dean should be a tag team because one, it puts less pressure on Roman, like, you know, to be a single superstar. Dean is the, the his popularity can kind of like, you know, shut off on Roman. Like it's a good it's makes a lot of sense. Maybe you don't even have to call it the shield. Call it like, I don't know. The blockade. It's something similar, but you know, it's not the shield. That was a joke, by the way, but. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, the shield spot was good, and then when uh, when uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns are talking after uh, power bombing Kane, and Roman Reigns is like, "Loser buys beers." That was funny. Yeah, um, it, I like how they're they're playing up the fact that Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns are all buddy buddy, yet they've been so like far apart. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah, doesn't really matter to me, but like. Uh, a little while ago, Dean Ambrose said Roman Reigns was like his best friend in the world or whatever, and um, I was like, this was after like he DDT'd or dirty deed um Roman, but I don't know. This this match was all right. It had a shitty stipulation that nobody probably would have cared about. But yeah, Kane's no longer the director of operations. Big whoop. I didn't care. I could I couldn't care less about Kane at this moment. Yeah. You know, the I I haven't cared about Kane in a long time. I haven't cared about Kane since Team Hell No, you know. At at best, you know. But this match everyone was, you know, clamoring for um the shield like triple threat. And now everyone, like I saw this online, everyone was saying Randy Orton is going to bring the match down. This should be a Shield triple threat match and nothing else. You know, why is Randy Orton even involved? Why is Dean Ambrose involved? He's won one match out of the last ten pay-per-views he's fought at. You know, why is Roman Reigns at the, like, it doesn't make any sense for either of these guys. That's why number one contenders are a good thing. That's why you have matches to determine number one contenders. You don't just have people vote online, you know. Who, do those votes even matter? Do, do, they, do they even matter? I, they do take the actual votes, I think. They do take the actual votes. But they, they make it so they know what people are going to pick. Yeah. Uh, like, who are you going to, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Mm-hmm. But then again, the whole of WWE doesn't really make sense. I could care less, like, um, about, you know, Kane being, you know, fired if Seth Rollins doesn't win. I could care less if Seth Rollins won or lost. I'm fine with either of those four being champion. I would most prefer Daniel Bryan being champion. I would most prefer Brock Lesnar still being champion. This way, you know, because if I feel like so many people have already gotten sick of Seth Rollins, um... Since he's became champion, they feel like he's just this smart ass heel who's not good for anything, and they're getting sick and tired of him. I I'm not. I enjoyed watching the guy in Ring of Honor. I enjoy watching him right now. I couldn't care less. You know, he does need to get away from the whole J and J security authority kind of thing because he he needs to like win on his own. And. They could stop like acting like heels need to be an army in order to win a match. Because like, yeah. that's not how it is. But mm-hmm. that's my two cents on the matter. So. And if you watch NXT, you know that heels don't need an army to win a match. No, you can be the- Kevin Owens. Be Kevin Owens. Just, you know, be him. He could powerbomb you five times, and then boom, the referee's going to stop the match. Get ahead of ourselves here, so we get into Raw. No, I was, talk- I was talking yeah. about I was like, TakeOver when he beats Sami mm-hmm. Zayn. Kevin Owens rules. I knew you were talking about uh, Owens, so I wanted to stop you before you got anything into Raw. Yeah. Um. Just say, let me get this match set up. Because it wasn't a title match initially. Yeah, every match has to be a title match for Kobe. Well, the titles need to be on the line in a pay per view. <laughs> See, he's not sick. I'm not sick, Seth. Seth's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Monday Night Raw. This is one of the best Raws in a while, in my opinion. In my opinion, though, the uh, the first two hours were kind of hard to watch. Yeah. But I'm happy I, I kept with it. Um, the show started with the authority in the ring, Stephanie McMahon's back. Um, they discussed the Intercontinental Championship uh, Elimination Chamber match. Sheamus comes out, Ryback Come out, comes out. Uh, they're both named for the Intercontinental Championship Elimination Chamber, and then they have a match, which wasn't anything special, really. 
Sheamus, his eye apparently got hurt. The referee pulls Ryback away, and then he pulls the bro kick. Not much to talk about with this match. Now, the the best takeaway from like the whole opening segment in the first match was like a majority of the focus was on the Intercontinental title, something you don't really get. So, yeah. um, it was cool to see you know the focus be placed on that because everybody's complaining, oh, the Intercontinental title isn't being exposed enough. Well, yeah, that's probably arguable considering the champion hasn't defended it and has also vacated it too. But you know, did he even defend it once? Daniel Bryan? Uh, no, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't defend it once, which kind of makes it... That's why Dolph Ziggler should have won, damn it. Ziggy every day, man. Yeah. Like, you... Ugh. Ziggler should just... He should totally win the Divas Championship, or, like, because, you know, his hair is long. Or have somebody, have Lana win the title, and, you know, he can carry it for her, because he's Mr. Steel Yo Girl. Um... <laughs> And yeah, sure. Um, have him win the U.S. title. Have him win the Intercontinental title. Cause I could take Ziggy every single day. You know, and I heard it's. I heard he actually might leave at the end of the year. I hope to God that doesn't yeah, happen. Me too. It, um, he, he should definitely win next year's Royal Rumble. I'm I'm calling it. He definitely should. And if he doesn't, I will never watch WWE ever again. So, you know, you don't want me to do these podcasts, like, every time. I'm definitely never doing another podcast after Royal Rumble if I don't get what I want. So, basically, you're being all the fans when Daniel Bryan didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I I mean, you you knew Sheamus was going to win this match. Ryback's kind of been in a, in a downturn lately, and they're building Sheamus up. So, you knew they weren't going to have Ryback win it. So. Yeah, Sheamus, they're trying to build him up to be, like, a big kind of strong heel. Not a monster, but strong. Um, I think they couldn't have Ryback, you know, dominate because, you know, his ribs were hurt and he just got his ass kicked the night before. It makes sense, but then again, it wasn't like a classic, but then again, not every match can be a classic, so. Yeah. And then the next match we have uh, King Barrett and Neville again. Uh, for our first recycled match of the night. Um, but before the match, uh, Neville comes out and is getting interviewed by Rene. Um, this is the first time he's really had mic time in a long time. I mean, he had that one time backstage for King of the Ring. But uh, I think he did really good. This was his first live mic. Yeah. Um, and then he gets interrupted by Bo Dallas, and they talk about how uh, Neville beat him for the NXT title to start his reign, and then Bo attacks him and hurts his leg. Um, which made the match even worse, because um, Neville's matches usually are cool because he can fly everywhere, and he really couldn't in this match. Um, King Barrett beats him, and then Bo continues to attack him after the match. I really hope they don't go with this feud. I don't know. I could. I tolerate it. I like Bo Dallas. You know, I think he's a waste of talent and everything. But there's always time for redemption. You know, he kind of seemed very, very close to his brother. I'm talking Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt. Yeah, spoilers, they're actually brothers. Um, I would love, love, love to see Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt like somehow become a tag team. Because, um, yes, Neville should go against Ziggler. Those two in a match, oof. It's like an IWC dream. Um, but, I don't know, I like Bo Dallas. He just can't re rely on his dumbass catchphrase. You know, unless he's talking it in like a badass way, and he mixes the shield in with it, Bo leave in the shield. Yeah, that's something I could tolerate. My thing is, I mean, I I think the rivalry will be okay if they do go with this, but my thing is, I want Neville to get over so much, and he's not gonna get over against Bo Dallas. It's an easy feud, and like it's not something to put a huge amount of pressure on. You know, you're not pitting him with a a huge star that's gonna be all prima donna. You know, like Cena and be a buried or whatever because you know you put him with then again, who is there to really put him with Cena's busy obviously um, Rollins is busy I, who is he defending now yeah, we'll get to that he should be in the IC title uh, elimination chamber Neville yeah imagine him doing a red, red arrow up the, up pod. the pod yeah, yeah. that would be that cool. was my first thought 
Yeah, I believe is what he says. Um, this this feud, I don't know. It it was interesting to watch. Like I feel, I feel like it's a million years ago because when I think of Neville or Adrian Neville, if you want to go back that far, I think of him and his his feuds with Sami Zayn, Tyson Kidd, and Tyler Breeze and whoever you know. I feel like. Bo Dallas was in a whole other lifetime, but then again, just time happens to get away from me, so whatever. But I don't know if this feud is done the right way. Obviously, um, it could be good. I have no doubt about it. So yeah, I mean, it can be done well, but like I said, I don't think he can really get over against Bo Dallas. I mean. Yeah. And then the next match we had was Bray Wyatt versus. Well, no, no. Before before we get into this, there was a segment with uh, Rusev and and Lana, um, where Lana came out and explained that he said I quit in Bulgarian, and Rusev pretty much broke up with her. I think we can say that. Well, I don't know. Like judging by Rusev's reaction from the segment later the night, um, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe he just suggested we're like we're on a break or you know when the relationships have that huge fight and they just go silent on each other for a little bit maybe that's what he was doing because you know what happened later in the night uh, like a guy who broke up with his girlfriend wouldn't get you know so angry and hostile but whatever um <laughs> yeah um but yeah People, what is your opinion on Rusev? I I like him. I I felt like he needed to win that I quit match though to keep him relevant. I mean, he's still more relevant than I thought he'd be after a third is that a third straight loss yeah. to Cena, third straight loss to Cena. Um, People. but he's he's in a little bit of a downturn. But I think this this uh, storyline with Lana is going to keep him relevant. People think Lana is the key to him being relevant. It's not like. He needs to win matches, though. Have him become a Brock Lesnar or Paul Heyman guy, you know. He's got that kind of, you know, strength and agility kind of thing. Like, there doesn't need... I mean, one, it's a mouthpiece, for one. And two, like, if you think about it, Rusev has been like the Hulk. He comes in, beats the living hell out of whatever's moving in front of him, and then he does his whatever job. Unless, of course, you know, you're John Cena. And he just gets buried. Um, with pa previous Paul Heyman guys, nobody's really been like that. Sure, you've had Punk and Brock Lesnar, but Ryback wasn't like that. He was kind of being like a whole bully, but that was just awkward. Curtis Axel was definitely not like that. Cesaro wasn't like that. You know, it, I don't know. I don't know what's the option available for Rusev because... Yes, they're hinting that Lana is going to leave soon, and I don't know. I'd like to see more of Rusev. I think he's a good heel, you know. Um, new champ, I think. New champ, yeah. Um, have him feud with Ziggler, even. Like, put put two guys together or make him a tag team. Like, or have a couple guys feud. I don't know. There's a solution for everything. And for the record, this Rusev Lana segment was the only segment I really cared about in the first two hours, so I'll I'll give it that. I mean, you knew it was going to happen, but it's really the only one I really cared about in the first two hours. Um, next match, like I said, our second recycled match of the night that we've seen over and over and over again in the last six months: Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose. This time with no stipulation. <laughs> hey, this match ruled. I like this match. I, I, these two always put on good matches. It's just we've seen it so much. Yeah, well, so have John Cena and Randy Orton, but you know, apparently WWE still thinks that we can take a few more of those. Um, like, with it's still the same comment. Um, this match, like I actually saw this online. Um, this match, for one, it was really good to me. And then I go online and I see like this feud or this match in one night was more organic and more well done than their entire feud last year yeah. you know maybe they're right you know I, I don't know like it's hard to really 
do anything right, it seems, nowadays mm -hmm. in WWE. Like, you either have to have a... Because their writers are for them? Yeah. This is the, the mindset of WWE. Soap opera and TV writers are better for the WWE. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. You know? You gotta have fans, right? Like, people who watch this stuff 20 years ago or whatever and saw what it took to make good television without a title involved or without a world-class mainstream kind of superstar involved, you know? Um, this, like, this match, I don't know, I like Bray Wyatt. I, it was good to see him wrestle somebody relevant on a Raw. Cause I, was, normally, I was mad the change of security came out to end the match. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. Like, why would... You know, I get it, but then again, they, they weren't needed, so who cares? Right. Moving on, our third recycled match of the night. Is, is this this is three in a row, isn't it? Yep. Yep, three th recycled matches in a row. We have Cesaro and Kid um, versus the New Day. And to answer the uh, question in the comments, he's probably going to be coming back around SummerSlam time. That's what I've seen online. I feel like he's going to be wrestling at Summer. He's going to be wrestling at SummerSlam. Like, oh yeah, he's probably going to face be facing Rollins for the title at S SummerSlam, and I don't think Rollins is going to drop it. No, that's going to be like his not passing of the torch because Brock doesn't even have the torch. It's like him is going to he's going to be going over on like a a huge star. Maybe you get my dream match: Brock Lesnar against Bray Wyatt. And because a battle between a battle of words between Paul Heyman and Bray Wyatt, it's gonna be fucking yes! awesome, awesome to watch. I I'm pining for that really. But that's that's my hopes and dreams. Then again, WWE doesn't cater to my hopes and dreams, fucking bastards. But who cares? Yeah. All right, and the next segment, <laughs> the next segment. Oh my God. Best segment on Raw, not only tonight, but in probably at least a few months. John Cena Open Challenge. Um, this was kind of teased before this, if you if you watch online. Um, I didn't take it as a teaser for this, but I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Um, Brock Lesnar is going to kill Seth, but Seth, JJ, security. Will win. Yeah, that's probably what will happen. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, so yeah, John Cena open challenge, and John Cena's running around the ring, waiting for who his, who his opponent's going to be, and all of a sudden, Kevin Owens' music hits. I marked out when I heard that music. I ran around my freaking room. Yeah, that, seeing him on Raw was like a dream come true, because... I thought it was going to be like a Sami Zayn thing, like a one-night thing, though. At this point. No. Um... To to see this happen, um, Kevin O Kevin Steen is actually like I hate the name Kevin Owens by the way. You, if you keep tuning in to watch the, the podcast, you're gonna hear me call these guys not by their WWE names. So Kevin Steen um, has always been one of my favorites. It was excellent seeing him on Ring of Honor. It was awesome seeing him debut. Like I I never I never really watched. Uh, NXT like live I would always go and see it like a day later but when he made his debut I knew something big was going to happen with him involved too so I tuned in and watched it live like, I was so shocked but so happy that Kevin Steen made his debut on Raw and that Twitter trend, though. yeah tell him about the trend Cody. I uh, was on Twitter last night and I went to the, the trends page and the number one trend uh, and on mobile, it gives you a little excerpt about the trend. The excerpt about the trend, you, you, you see Kevin Owens with a mic, and then the excerpt of the trend um, was Kevin Owens debuts on Raw, kills John Cena, walks out. <laughs> Best trend on Twitter ever. I mean, it's a little reaching because a pop-up powerbomb isn't going to do anything if... Like two F fives and a awesome power bomb. It was an awesome power bomb, but if two F fives and a bunch of mixed martial arts moves and a bunch of Brock Lesnar fist punches cannot kill John Cena, nothing really can. Mm -hmm. John Cena isn't killed. John Cena is the killer. Mm -hmm. He's the barrier. He's the Undertaker, the real life one with a shovel. 
I'll get to why this is important in a second, but they made Kevin Owens look really strong in this segment. Yeah, and another thing too, um, I saw something online, and I really firmly believe this, Kevin Owens stomping on the U.S. title belt is going to give John Cena plenty of reason to debut a new belt. So, if he doesn't show up with a new belt, either next week or by Elimination Chamber, then... I'm I'm wrong, and I'll admit that. But other than that, I'm dead set on believing he's going to debut another spinner belt. Hopefully not that stupid-ass one you like, Cody, but... Yeah. I don't know. I hate spinner belts so much. Um, I heard a little bit about who might debut next week. Um, I'm not going to say it on the podcast. I'll tell Bryce here right now, but I, well, I'm going to keep it a secret for the people watching the podcast. Really? Yeah, Ooh, that would be that would be an awesome match. Yeah, that yeah. Would be an awesome match. Um, but um, after that, uh, I don't. Oh yeah, I I know when it is. Later in the show, there's another segment with Kevin Owens, but we'll get to that. Yeah, it was um, an interview with Renee Young. Yeah, but we'll get to that, and it, it's an important segment. Yeah. Um, and next up we got Dolph Ziggler versus Stardust, a match that. It didn't really matter. I, I didn't understand why the match was going on in the first place, but um, it, it made sense after that. Um, it was basically just to have, give Dolph Ziggler a reason to be out there. Yeah. You, you knew he was going to beat Stardust. Stardust has been jobbing for a while. He needs to go back to Cody Rhodes. Anything you want to say about the actual match? Ziggler all the way, man. He should, he should win every single match. I was surprised he was there with how, how much he was bleeding last night and wrestling. Um, but yeah, quick match, Dolph Ziggler wins, and then, um, Lana comes out, I'm like, why is Lana coming out, why is she coming down the ramp, and comes in the ring and kisses Dolph Ziggler, and this is where the botch happened, Rusev actually botched the segment, you could see that, that Lana and Ziggler were both looking at the ramp, Lana kept looking behind her, they were waiting, waiting for Rusev, waiting for Rusev, waiting for Rusev, and Rusev would not come out, so finally they just did what the crowd wanted them to do and kissed again. And now out comes Rusev. Well, you heard the, you heard them chant one more time or, or whatever the hell it was. So. Rusev was supposed to come out quicker though. They they should they weren't supposed to do it twice. Well, still though, Lana's hot to watch kiss. And you know her, her and Rusev are actually dating in real life? Yeah. Yeah. They're married, I think. No, they're not. Yeah. No, they're not. No, they're that online. they're you heard wrong. Don't don't believe everything you hear online. They're at least dating. Yeah, they're at least definitely dating. And Lana's American, too. Yeah. Her accent was breaking a little bit in the first segment, too. Yes, I noticed that. I was not the only one to notice that. Uh, um, yeah. I feel like she's going to become American now. Like, she's going to go away for a little bit. And, boom, she's going to come back fresh, new American. You know. But after the second kiss that should have never been, but was, um, out comes Rusev, um, who attacks Ziggler. Um, and then gets all upset at Lana, who then slaps him, and then gets he gets and then he gets zigzagged, and then Ziggler leaves with Lana. Yeah, Mr. Steel, yo girl. Um, Fandango, step up your game. <laughs> hey, he got her to dance. I don't know what you're talking about, but he still um, needs to step up his game. Fandango? Yeah, he's got enough game. He's had Summer Rae's had Layla and Rosa. He's got enough game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually went gay, because all three of those girls combined, oof. Ziggler, Ziggler don't even need to do anything to steal your girlfriend. <laughs> no, he just stands there and, like, lets the girls come to him. They just come in swarmed, it seems like. Yeah. But, um, that's actually interesting, because, I don't know, the brutality of, the, the brutality of Rusev against Dolph Ziggler, like, Dolph Ziggler has that never-say-die kind of ab- attitude, seeing him fight... Rusev, that's going to be interesting to see, mm-hmm. because I feel like Dolph Ziggler wouldn't even like let himself pass out if that was an option, mm-hmm. and what if he gets put in the accolade? Yeah. But you know, whatever. Yeah. All right. So after that segment, we had uh, Eric Roman and Luke Harper versus Fandango and Zack Ryder. Just this, just why? It was just to get them established as a powerful threat. And it did the good enough job. Although they kind of sacrificed Zack Ryder, you know, the yeah. poor guy. But um, I don't know how, how strong you look when you beat Fandango and Zack Ryder, though. But You could be strong beating up Hornswoggle. It doesn't really matter. 
just matters how good you look doing it. And, you know, whatever. And it, we're just, like, speeding by that match. Yeah. Um, the next match is a Divas Championship match between Nikki Bella and Naomi. First off, I don't understand the whole uh, Brie Bella ban from ringside. I thought, oh, this means Nikki's going to be dropping the title, or else it would make, it, it had no purpose. Yeah. And then it had no purpose. It didn't have purpose. <laughs> because she didn't drop the title. And then, like we said, they didn't bring Paige back at payback because it made no sense. And they bring her back now when it also makes no sense. If you're like me, you didn't even watch this match. Like it, like a friend said, it's it's a piss break, and that's it. Um, you know, other like this is no disrespect to the divas. It's no disrespect to the fact that they're women. It's just the fact that they cannot wrestle. With the bare exception, and, of, and WWE doesn't give them any time for to actually yeah. put on a match. With the exception of a few, like three, maybe even four on the main roster, none of them are worth watching. So I just, I either stay there, gawk at them, because some of them are very attractive, or I go to the bathroom, or I get something to eat, or I, I do something. Hell, I even turn it off raw. And for those of you that th that think we just don't like the divas wrestling, um, I think I can speak for both of us. Yeah, I think I can speak for both of us that when we watch NXT, the Divas are one of our favorite things on that show. I love watching Bailey. She one knows how to wrestle, and two, she's like, she has that, like, low queer. I just want to love her right now. Like, I wish she was my girlfriend. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know, cause I like hugs. Are you number one contender? Sure. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I feel like a Bailey, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, like. Those three together, put them at, you know, Charlotte, she wants to headline a pay-per-view. And I thought, not going to happen, but hey, maybe maybe WWE can do a Divas-only pay-per-view, you know, or something like that. Yeah. But seeing, if I got to see those three, like, within, like, before I gave up hope on WWE, if I got to see them, like, on the main roster, no doubt, I would love it. And I would actually stay there and watch a Divas match in full duration. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, uh, when we're, uh, we are expanding, I will also be doing NXT reviews every week. Uh, once again, without Bryce, usually, except for the specials. Yeah. But, um, yeah, a and after this match, uh, we have uh, Kevin Owens backstage. Uh, in an, it, he was walking away from talking with Triple H, and then Renee comes up and asks him what he was talking about with Triple H. And... We find out that it's going to be Kevin Owens versus John Cena at Elimination Chamber. And one thing I noticed about this is they I don't think they explicitly said it's going to be for the U.S. Championship. You know, they're not going to put this match together and not have a title match going on. My, my thing is, though, I don't think it can be for the title. I think it shouldn't be for the title because if it's for the title, Cena's going to win. Cena's not going to drop the title. Well, no, he's not going to drop the title, but still, like... Mm -hmm. I, in order to save face, I'd have Owens get disqualified. Yeah. Have him like have him abuse the ropes. Have him like choke Cena in the ropes, and then have him like not break it before a five count, and then get disqualified. Yeah, but uh, my thing is, if it's not for the title, uh, they're they're building up. Like I said earlier, they're building up Owens super strong, not only on NXT but now on the main roster. Yeah. I think it's not going to be for the title, and they're going to have him beat Cena in his debut match. That would be a good idea. Like I gotta admit, that'd be a good idea, and I, I don't know. I would have actually waited until after his match with um. I would have waited till after his match with Sami Zayn, like have him debut on a Friday or, or a Thursday or whatever, or next week, you know, and like just should not be for the title. Let's Owens win. Yeah, I I would I for one would love to see John Cena just get the shit kicked out of him by Kevin Owens or Steen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, this it, Ring of Honor fans would totally get this. S Kevin Steen is wrestling's worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. I want him to be John Cena's worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it, in my opinion, I was surprised that. Kevin Owens is is 
pretty much on the main roster now. Because uh, when did he debut in NXT? January? December. 11. L- December? That's like three months. Four months, maybe. It, h- look how long um, accomplished superstars that, 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 can show, that, that have shown that they can wrestle and, um, and talk on the mic. Neville and Zayn. Look how long they were in freaking NXT. And, um, I mean, Owens has shown that he can talk, but he hasn't had any really, like, long matches. He's just been, like, beating people up. So he hasn't really shown what he can do in the ring yet. And he's already being called up to the main roster. Nothing against that. I love that he's on the main roster. I'm just freaking surprised. I've seen what Kevin Owens can do. He can really, like, his, like, when he was in Ring of Honor, he was doing this stuff every night, you know. Mm -hmm. He was having 20-minute matches every time. For a guy his size, you would think a guy would like him would be winded after five minutes. No, he can really carry himself the entire match. And, uh, you know, in Ring of Honor, they let guys do 20 minutes every fucking night. It's unbelievable. But, um, and if you think about it, he's only had, like, one feud, and it's with Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. He did that thing with a- Alex Riley. He did that thing with Finn Balor. But they were, like, kind of start and stop like it was quick to be finished with like I'm thinking I personally believe that these guys should be called up way sooner because Kevin Steen is 31 Sami Zayn or El Generico is 30 Adrian Neville's he's still in his 20s I know that Um, Kenta is 34 Hideo Itami he's 34 but like all these guys are like and okay, if okay, if you're a WWE fan, you're you're you know Samoa Joe is rumored to be showing up sometime soon. Like, we're not gonna spoil when. I'm sure people know, but um, he's 37. Yeah. Like he's CM Punk's age because those guys are like really close friends. That not that that has anything to do with age or whatever. Um. You can't expect these guys to do years in NXT before you call them up to the main roster. Hell, Rhino is even in NXT, and he's like 40. Like, you can't, like, call these guys up early so you can have them headline, you know, the WWE for, like, four, maybe five years. Have it like the Attitude Era. You don't need two big mega stars. You can have, like, a multitude of these guys. Because then, everything is equally interesting. If the first match doesn't mean anything, the last match shouldn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. You know, in my opinion, because you gotta get the audience hooked and you gotta send them home happy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you don't do shit. Yeah. Personally, I think this match at Elimination Chamber is gonna be the reason how a lot of people watch Elimination Chamber, and it's gonna get a lot of people to get in on that free month on the network. Yeah, and. If you're like me, like Elimination Chambers kind of like died out to you a long time ago because it just became repetitive. They're not using the steel cage part to like. It was cool when I actually went to it. Yeah, I heard you went to that. Um, like they don't use the raw brutality that a cage should like help with or a chamber or whatever. But um, the Elimination Chambers, the mystique and the alluring kind of factor, died out like kind of when Edge retired like the last year he was in the last chamber match that he was in um I don't know it's because things just stopped being interesting but yeah I think they should have a, a Divas Elimination Chamber match no they shouldn't they shouldn't have an Elimination Chamber with featuring Divas because they're probably going to complain about breaking a nail or something whatever their hair is probably going to get tangled in the metal I bet I, I say that they should I know they won't not only because I know WWE, but I also n- know that Paige and AJ wanted to do their match at Hell in a Cell in the cell, but WWE wouldn't let them, so they're not going to let six divas do an Elimination Chamber match. Yeah. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of gimmick pay-per-views. Like, TLC shouldn't be a thing. Hell in a Cell shouldn't be a thing. Extreme Rules shouldn't even be a thing. Just have come up with cool, catchy names. Backlash, yeah. you know, that meant something. You're dealing you can with have those those matches on those pay-per-views still. You can have your matches whenever you want. Like mm-hmm. it, I feel like when you do, um, when you have a gimmick pay-per-view, you're kind of limiting having that style of a match that one day of the year. But like 
you know, Mankind and Undertaker, like, did they, like, if they were around right now, did, would they have to have their match at Elimination Chamber? No. King of the Ring was in June that year, I think. And yeah, we didn't we did not end up talking about that, but that was kind of funny, and I was surprised that the fans didn't react more to that. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. But then again, like, in case you didn't know, he lives by Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, the this guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe like, I feel like everywhere there's a more security, like everywhere, because you know that Orioles game was. Why would you be roasting the Orioles? They got good now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are pretty good now. Yeah. But, I don't know, um, if there was probably another riot going on, like, people would have, like, broken out the batons and, you know, beat the shit out of some people. But other than that, I don't know. All right. And uh, now we get to the, I guess, main event segment overall. They didn't have a main event match, really, uh, unless you want to count, um, I don't know. The last match before this was the Divas match. So... There really wasn't one. Um, hey, that all Paige needs to do, or Charlotte needs to do, is fight the last match of the night, and then that's headlining something. It's not a pay-per-view, but that one dream comes true, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, in the last segment, the Authority came out and honored Seth Rollins. They ended up being interrupted by Dean Ambrose. Uh, who said, again, like he did earlier in the show, we didn't mention that, but he said earlier in the show that he wanted a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match at the Chamber. Um, Ambrose and Rollins started fighting, and then Ambrose revealed cinder blocks. How do you sneak those in without anybody... How do you sneak those in without anybody noticing those? Mm -hmm. Like, come on. I thought it was cool, but... Yeah, I don't understand how you sneak those in. Um, and he was holding Rollins down with a, and he had a steel chair above him, like he was gonna crush his skull or something. And he and then um, the authority said, if you let him go, it will give you your match. And I guess he did let him go, not under his own power, but he let him go. Um, so now we have, I, I mean, they kept fighting, but uh, it's kind of irrelevant at that point. Um, now we have a match between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose at Elimination Chamber. Are you excited for this? I am very excited. Hopefully, like, they kind of add, like, a fresh new kind of appeal factor because I don't want to see, like, a repeat of their feud last year. You know, we're talking about recycling stuff earlier. Um, I don't need to see another, like, recycled bit, you know, from last year. Keep it fresh, keep it entertaining, add, like, some new exciting factors to it. You know, the title itself is, you know, factor enough, but I, I want to see more, you know. But other than that, I am very excited. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, I mean, I, I'm excited for that too. Yeah. Um, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, I think, work well together. And Dean Ambrose is always entertaining. So I'm excited for it, even though you probably know who's going to win. Um, yeah. I guess... We can kind of say who we think is going to win because we said that we think Rollins is going to hold the title till SummerSlam, but um, so that kind of tells you who we think is going to win. But that was the end of Raw. I guess that's the end of the podcast. Do you have anything anything else you want to say? Um, other than I hope Ziggler wins whatever the hell match he's in at the Elimination IC Chamber. IC yeah, uh, yeah, he should he should have become the IC champion after at WrestleMania, not Sheamus. Sheamus needs to gather some like shit to get over with like you don't just throw a heel a title you know in hopes they get over you gotta build up to it yeah. but other than that um the elimination chamber you can get new day is the best day shut the hell up um whatever happens uh i hope to enjoy every single part of it with the exception of the divas championship match is that for sure going to be it's like? Not for sure, yeah. No, I, it, I. That's why I think, because they're all like Paige came out and attacked everybody. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to have an elimination chamber match, with Paige, Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, Tamina, Naomi, and Charlotte. Yeah. That's not going to happen, but um, I'm hoping Harper and Rowan really dominate their uh, elimination chamber match. 
but I'm sure they'll be in one. They're not in? Probably, uh, probably on the kickoff, they'll be in some kind of match. No, no, they should definitely... Who, who the hell else is there? If they use the Lost Matadors in that damn match, I'm not watching they, the paper. They are. They're in the match. Oh my god, I'm not watching the pay-per-view now. I'm there, not there's there. six teams, though. I, I We did. We also didn't hit on that. Uh, I must have missed that at some point. Yeah. But, um... Oh yeah, this was after the tag match between Kid, Cesaro, and the New Day. Um... All, literally all the teams teams came out, and uh, the primetime players ended up being on top. Um, I think we know what's going to happen in the Elimination Chamber with what happened. In, with now that now that we know who everyone's going to be in it, yeah. I think we know what's going to happen. Not going to spoil anything because I'm going to have uh, predictions before that. Yeah. Um, a predictions podcast of my own, and then we'll do a podcast after that. But yeah, I think we're done. Yeah. I think we're done here. Um, make sure to tune in. Um, I'm pretty sure tomorrow night we're going to be doing an NXT TakeOver Unstoppable review, like literally right after. We, we still have to set some things up. Uh, so keep an eye on my YouTube channel. It's exclamation point YouTube in the chat on Twitch. It'll give you a link to my YouTube channel. Um, as of now, we're planning on doing it tomorrow night. Uh, if anything changes, I will post a short video tomorrow letting you guys know. Um, that will be pretty much immediately after TakeOver as soon as I get everything set up. So um, I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching, and this will probably be on YouTube tomorrow. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I gotta end the stream. Uh, give me a second. Once again.